Welcome to a new CatSim Plus tutorial. My name is Renaud Denzer. Before we get started, I have a quick announcement. Uh, Rail System is pleased to announce uh, the release of CatSim version 3.4. So please feel free to visit us at orelsystems.com, reach out to us and inquire about upgrades or quotes or any additional information. Today's topic came from a user of ours asking how to best sum the total amount of a compound in a stream over time. So this user specifically wanted to find out how many fibers were being lost to an overflow as they were uh, you know being lost to the abyss as a sink in CatSim. And so uh, this user first thought was to create an infinitely large tank and to collect all the streams and this is a correct way of doing it and then there's two subsequent other methods that I will uh, go through throughout this tutorial so to start off let's draw a process line so I'm gonna go ahead and draw a process line and create a stream definition and the stream definition here is going to be using default SI units with the only difference that I'd like to work in mass flow rate in kilograms per minute. So I change this from seconds to minutes. The stream type, I'm looking to use the paper type to get the fibers. And the compounds are going to be simple. Simply water as well as fiber and that's going to finish my stream chemistry just hit the save button um, here's my little flask let's move this over here so we can change things as needed and when i play or press run it'll ask me to specify now i've done this ahead of time in that when i specify the water a direct setting and I use, for example, 245 kilograms per minute, as well as for fiber, something like 5 kilograms per minute, I should get a consistency of 2%. So let's see if I got that right. Here's my consistency, 2%. And the way CADSIM calculates consistency well we can discover that by going inside the um, stream types go over to paper type and by scrolling down we'll see consistency the definition is the total or the sum of fibers and suspended uh, compounds divided by the flow and the flow for the up is the total uh, or the sum of component mass flows so in our case there's water and fiber so Fiber over water and fiber times 100 gives us the consistency. So 5 divided by 250 will give us, times 100 will give us a 2% consistency. So um, another way to get the consistency to show up is by going in our uh, process directory and selecting a meter. So I can choose any kind of meter, density, level meter. Well, I want to focus on the consistency meter. The type will be, instead of an indicator, it'll be a meter. And I don't need an outlet. And I'd like it to be automatically named for me. Uh, so I'm satisfied with these selections. And I can click OK to drop it here in the middle. It'll crop it out for me. And by running my simulation, We should click on here and see also the measured consistency showing up as 2. Perfect. Now going back into draw mode and to, to start collecting the different or the total flows from this. It could be, this could be an overflow of whatnot, but one way of doing it is to create an uh, infinitely large tank. So let's go ahead and drop that part. Let's select tank. We can go to the parts op. Um, we don't need to customize anything really. We keep it as little as we want. Maybe keep the top open, no problem. 
we could show level bars, but since it's infinitely large, it's not going to be very meaningful. We don't need high and low alarms either. And so we're happy with these selections. I will drop it here and then call it infinitely large tank. And you'll uh, add a flow in and a tank flow out. So CatSim will recognize this as a tank. It also needs unit cast overflow on one of them to be recognized as such. Um, and so by pressing run, I anticipate them asking us to specify the tank. And so I'll put a direct setting. And let's select a huge tank. So add a lot of zeros behind there. And our initial volume, well, we would like it to be zero. Um, the next thing that we want to do is to get a flow out of the tank. And the trick here is to make it very insignificant. So adding a bunch of zeros before a one. And so if I press run, I can then view what goes out of the tank in a bleed, essentially is also 2% consistency. Um, but when we click on the tank, we don't really see much more information than just the current volume uh, or current level, which is slowly creeping up because it's a very massive tank. So to, to change that, what we can do is add some unit cast uh, variables and they are for example report equals consistency consistency did I type this correctly yes I did and I make this unit cast uh, so there it is what we can do is maybe take this and clone it so it looks gray and not so obvious and when we pre press run, and click the tank itself, we now see consistency on our list of variables here, which is set to two, and it's what we expected. Another keyword that is interesting for us is called re port all equals true and all these can be found inside the help files in fact I'll just move this here and clone the one above make it nice and pretty uh, if you click the tank and go to module help you'll get to the description of the tank and you'll see all the different keywords uh, report all which I'm using right now and the report uh, of the specific ones. I use the consistency as a variable. And so if I, let's make this a bit um, more interesting so we can view immediately the um, consistency. Let's add a format. So I'll put one here, which is what's going through the pipe. And we might as well add the same one on the outlet of the tank. And so I will then run it and press play. And now we see our 2% consistencies. And we see here now the accumulation of fiber and water. So if I were to pause and then take out my calculator and take the fiber divided by fiber plus uh, the water, I will get the consistency too. And to make this even more accurate, I suppose, let's do a save file, save start file. We could, let's say, recycle that insignificant stream inside, because Katsum can handle this pretty well dynamically. Um, 
and voila this is basically a way of utilizing an infinitely large tank to to kind of sum the the uh, consistency in fact the let's let's put a chart on here let's run this here for 60 iterations and well I've already done that uh, but what we should discover is uh, our consistency is 2% and let's put our let's read the consistency of the tank with this one here for the next 60 passes there's that 2 so we did 2 passes at 60 and if I were to change how much water goes in 120 and run for two passes of 60 I will get an average consistency of 2.66 and this is the same calculation here as taking fiber divided by fiber plus water so now what is a, another way of creating this calculation without having a tank uh, without drawing this well we can do the second method which is to use some math and specifically to use a Euler integral and to divide it by time so what a Euler integral does is it'll calculate the area underneath the curve and then if we get uh, different times with different flow rates it just cumulatively calculates what's underneath the curve and then it'll um, we can divide that by the total time and get an average and so let's go ahead and build this up so I'm going to go into my signal math library and pick a Euler part and because I'm going to start drawing signal logic I'll pick this as the default for process line so here we go I add uh, an out to the Euler and actually an in as well and uh, we'll specify it so let's zoom in a little bit because it's getting a little tiny let's do that in a moment so I'm going to equate to a variable my Euler in an add term and equate it to to um, the flow the total flow and it asks me to specify the initial integral and I'm going to keep this at zero and so uh, let's put a chart on on the flow so we see the flow going in so we'll see the, the curve and then as a result the area under the curve and so if I press run for 60 minutes, so 60 iterations, load my start file, there's my 60 over here. Uh, I have 125, which was the flow rate, and multiplied that by 60, would give me the area under the curve. So I'm anticipating a 7,500 okay well I get 7,375 and the reason for that is because our logic is a bit behind because I drew this first then this outlet and then the inlet so to rectify that let's exit draw mode and go into simulation change order of execution which is quite important when using math and logic so let's show the path Currently, the first thing it does is looks at the stream going into the tank, so the consistent meter followed by solving tank. Then it goes and does the Euler before actually taking the input to the Euler. So there's our bottleneck. So I need to switch this guy here to the fifth step. So I type in five, okay, five, six, seven. Now that's the proper order. And when I'm satisfied with that, I hit run. And let's do repeat those 60 iterations with our save file. So 125 
times 60 gives us 7,500 as anticipated. Uh, now I need to to get an average flow. So say I run a subsequent 60, but beforehand I change. Let's go and change the flow of water to 250, 245, which gives us a consistency of two instead of four. Let's run the next 60 passes. So there's a step change. And 250 times 60 should give me 15,000 plus the earlier 7,500. That gives me 22,500. Now if I were to divide that by the total time, I would get the average. And anticipate an average of 187.5. So to get that average, we have to import time or to keep track of time. So let's drop an anchor point here, go into our signal math library and look for time. I'm happy with it being dropped here and add a line here. Press and hold my left button to uh, put in an anchor point and get a signal math divide. So D for divide part. So I'm happy with this position too. I gotta link this up. So let's take a half snap, press the alt button and pull down this guy here. Actually this little arrow is redundant so we can delete it. Let's zoom in here so we can see better. And we need an out after the divide. It's about this long. And if I go ahead and press run, I will for well it's going for many more trials, so let's just pause. I end up with uh, 1,260 minutes. So that's the total area under the curve divided by the total time. And that will give me the average, which hasn't changed, so it should give me 250. Um, let's do those repetitions here with the two passes of 60 minutes each. There's the first one. Let's change our consistency from two to four by changing the flow of water and running a pass. And the area under this curve divided by 120 should give me 187.5. Wonderful. So just as we showed earlier on uh, with the help files, the definition of a consistency was to take the fiber divided by the total flow. So let's copy this portion here and paste it up here. So we don't have to repeat everything. We could just plagiarize and copy paste stuff. Uh, the only difference is we're going to pull this spec here onto our process line and edit it. Edit it to pull from it the fiber mass flow and as well as take the time and link it to that divide here. And it's going to complain because you can't have two things named the same on a, on, a, uh, on a stream here. So I know that when I press run, it's going to ask me to change the name. There it was. And so to, to deal with that, I can uh, name this object like the second say divisor and to make it invisible I'll just clone that and so currently we are dividing the flow by the time so we get the average and then we need to divide one from the other so I need to drop another divide here so that's signal math divide and I'm happy with this I'm gonna place the next one because I know oh no uh, that's it that's all I wanted to do and link this guy here with a half snap pull this one down in fact delete it because it's redundant and connect 
uh, put a, an out to the divide and I'm also going to add another line here because once we've divided we need to m multiply by a hundred to get the percentage for consistency so signal math this time we need a multiplier multiply insert I'm happy here we need an outlet what else can we do we can add a format let's put a new format select the line we want to add the format to number sign number number for two significant figures signal here actually we can also be fancy and name that and we call it the Euler math consistency why not and uh, when we play this it'll ask us to specify that multiplier I believe that's correct so let's do a direct setting and call it 100 percent and that's good before we start uh, let's add the consistency of the Euler to this chart uh, I believe we were charting this this guy here oh, we we're charting the consistency in the tank which is fine let's add the consistency of that signal which is called the Euler math consistency perfect oh it put it in another one no no I wanted to chart them together so settings I want to add this guy okay there now they're charted together okay and I think we're ready let's play 60 minutes all right our our consistency is four here it should be four inside the tank as charted here the subsequent 60 before we do them let's go and change the flow rate of the water so that we get the equivalent of a consistency of two so here we go 60 subsequent minutes a total of 120 and here we have it 267 these guys are perfectly superimposed 267 is what's being recycled or what's also found inside the tank boom so here we have uh, figured out how to do the first two methods to get um, the total of a compound in the stream over time and the last method to do it is to use a derived variable function which is a, a like a cheat code so we can go ahead in our stream definition click edit and go to derived and create some derived variables so I'm gonna create a couple here I'm gonna create average flow you have to select what kind of derived variable well under function clicking OK you'll see all of these different kinds of functions that you can select from and we're interested in the average for the flow because that's what we named it happy with that let's create another one let's call that one AVG average fib for fiber select function again okay average and select fiber from the pull down menu and one last one create average consistency CON this is a function okay and average consistency finish finish so that was the the uh, shortcut way of doing it and in fact when we press run to do our experiment we will chart as well um, from that stream the average consistency to see it to chart it with the other two which followed the same trend earlier on so let's go ahead let's do 60 minutes at 2 percent consistency we see a two everywhere they all superimposed in fact when we click on the stream and we go to our average fiber and flow they're five and 250 respectively 
just as calculated here and here. Wonderful. But then, plot twist, if we change that to 120 and run at a consistency of 4 for 60 minutes, oh, there is a disparity. So the Euler math module gives us the correct value, so does the tank. However, we get an average consistency of 3, and we are expecting to see 2.67. And the reason it does that is because for half the time it was running at a consistency of 2 and then 4, and the average of 2 and 4 is 3, but it's just the, the number. It doesn't take into account the, the mass flows. You know, which were quite dramatically changed, and, w and the, therefore the weights change. And so this poorly reflects uh, the, the consistency, the actual consistency. This gives you the average of, of the reading, but not on the mass flow basis. So you have to be very careful using uh, the sh this shortcut using derived variable. It's fine for single components, uh, full components, but you can get into trouble uh, fairly easily um, by by just trusting it uh, by the red, the red number instead of on the mass flow basis. Well, there you have it. This was our tutorial uh, to recapitulate. We discovered that we can figure out uh, how to totalize or total the amount of a compound in a stream over time using three different methods and that was to use an infinitely large tag using math or using a derived variable. Thanks for your attention and uh, see you soon again.